Welcome back everybody and what a way to start hey checking out the backside of an orchid <laughs> mm, okay um this is Brasavola flagellaris uh, piece number two and three from Kopf Orchidin another one of the mounts that I remoss two times a year now there's only two pieces on this because the third piece died when I was trying to grow it back throughout the winter in Ceramis. I have made my conclusions as to why the Ceramis failed, but that's not what the video is about here. I am going to, at this stage, I should be remossing this orchid. But it is the first one with a thicker root structure according to the Ninja Orchid's root scale grade, <laughs> which is a 1 is a thin root, a 10 is a cymbidium root. And this one to me qualifies as a 5. So this one I'm going to put on one of my Ninja mounts. I'm going to take you along because it's the first one that is going straight from moss onto Ninja without any transitioning or new roots growing all the roots here have already grown but they have growing tips they are also still displaying the signs of not absorbing any water because of how fresh and new they are so that is the plan today i hope that you join me if you're here at this point thank you so very very much for being here and i hope that you stick around to the end and see how it goes because this one is going on a prototype and it's the first one that's not going to be remossed. Let me also show you this mount that I'm going to put it on. The other mounts from the video of making the ninja version of the Michael mounts, I cut this grating thing in half to make two. Based on the fact I have two pieces on there and very long roots, I want it on a longer mount. I'm going to see how I'm going to position the orchid. That's why I haven't made a hook yet. Whether I want it like this or like this. Either way, roots are going to be sticking out over the edge. But what I want to try and test, and this is different from what I showed in the video. Before, I did like a quilt thing and stuck, sewed, sorry, the material, which is hob filter, onto different points of the mount. I have not done that in this case. This is loose. There's a lot of give. The center is not attached at all. The outsides are sewn in. The reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to see if I can thread roots underneath the grate once we're done. Should be interesting. There could be a lot of snap, crackle and pop or the opposite. But this is what I wanted to try with the one with longer roots in order to see different variables of this material and the grating that I'm using for a mount. Never has this point one bloomed for me, but it's on this year that I can see a substantial amount of improvement on the growth. And of course, I have a root growing awkwardly through the hook. Ah, this is how it starts. Already we're finding a little bit of obstacles. I always try to protect the roots right from the get-go. And then sometimes, even right at the end, 99% was going so well, and then BAM! right at the end something happens i'm not trying to jinx myself i'm just being very realistic about getting a little bit ahead of myself sometimes i'm thinking i've got the job done and then i am proven completely wrong the eye off the ball for one minute now i could also sew this material onto this mount, but it's already proving itself to be too small. That's why I'm just thinking it's going on something else straight away. And also, 
I'm going to save this mount here because it's going to serve me for something else. I can clean it up and then I'll sew more of the hob filter onto it. So that's my thought process. So I'll just work away on this and I'll come back when I've cleaned it up. And there she is, not 100% cleaned up, but good enough for me to see what I'm doing, what I'm up against. And, uh, oops, it's looking pretty good, but that is quite a tangled root system there to try and get off while preserving the mount. Uh, yeah, I really don't want to cut up this mount, but oopsie daisy, I think. I'm going to forfeit the mount in order to salvage this gorgeous root system. Yeah, hmm. Definitely, definitely have progress, but with consequences. So I'm going to figure something out and I'll come back. Decision made. No one's going anywhere. I am going to attach the mount to the new mount. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to risk the roots. I'm not going to risk that white mount that it's on right now. It's solid. All the fishing line is gone. I am now going to just attach the mount to the other mount. The beauty of inorganic growing is I shouldn't need to fuss with taking this one off. Now I could fuss a little bit more and get some sphagnum moss out from the depths of this crevice, but I don't even want to do that because I'm not going to put any more sphagnum moss on. I'm going to just let whatever happens, happens. You see, I even tried to make the mount in the background a heart. <laughs> you see, it's like, like that and like that. Sorry about the disturbance back there, but suddenly Late afternoon, somebody feels they need to blow dry their driveway. Why can't they just let the sun do it? So do I speak above them and then get a little bit quieter? Something like that. We'll work it out. Here's my heart, <laughs> which is unfortunate because I'm going to turn it upside down. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Now I want to point something out for future updates, just to take note. This root is yellow already when water gets to it. Is it dying back? I don't know. It's not damaged anywhere, but it grew at the same time as these three roots. And you can see that these three are older than obviously what's sticking out right now. And those, these, these are last year's growths. So everything that's white, even though there has been contact with water is still not absorbing any water and this one feels kind of loose on its yep this one's compromised this one i'm gonna take it off nothing worse than knowing you've done something really bad and then watching it deteriorate it's off what a shame i thought i heard a snap before i wasn't sure where it was coming from okay so my plan originally was to take it off the mount and preserve my mount. We've got a change of plan based on the fact she is so intertwined. I'm not going to be chip chopping around. I'm going to just do a very subtle mount on mount and I'm going to do it with fishing line. Because I like to be, I like the clearness of it. I was thinking of my white wire but it's a bit too thick, or maybe not. Maybe not, let's, let's try one. Why not? Prototype, right? Let's try one, let's see if I can bend it accordingly. If I can even pick it up, come on. If I can bend it without too much headache and I can see the worst place is up here, Hang on a second. Do I want to tilt my mount a bit? Maybe do it like this. There we go. Now I have some roots underneath here that I'm watching carefully as to where the plastic is and where the root 
tip is and its growth. And I did not sew the back on at all on the grid. So I'm going to see what that root does if I don't destroy it. Let me put it more like this. And another thing I'm not going to do is tighten it to squash it down. I want it to be so solid on the mount, but not tighten it because I have root tips in the gaps underneath here. So this is all a little bit like, okay, where do we go? Let's try the wire. Some of the roots underneath the older part of the mount actually were growing along the iron grate that it was supporting. <laughs> so I quickly I took a very sharp knife and just wedged them off a little bit. Now this is going to take me a lot of spraying and watering to keep this hydrated during the summer. During the winter, it's a doddle. It's a, a doddle for me in the winter, but I will it gives me an opportunity to observe the mount as such better if I need to watch it more closely as opposed to thinking, oh no, it's fine and walking away. So I'm quite happy with the extra attention this is going to need. Now I'm not going all ninja on this because I am really watching the root tips down the back here. I do need my pliers though because my hands are too clumsy. Ideally I want to be able to twist these. A little bit of diligence at the beginning gives me a much better conclusion at the end as well. If I were to rush this now, just going by assumptions, oh, forget it, it doesn't matter, get it over with, it's not going to tell me anything at the end of the day. So if I take extra care now, whatever happens afterwards will be because of whatever happens afterwards and not because I was careless in the beginning. So I'm going to put a timestamp in the description as to when I'm done, if you don't want to watch all of this. But I'm just going to take my time and keep going. And that is something that I did not expect. I broke a corner, but that's one of the reasons why I'm saying I need to do this. I need to wor work through it in order to be able to judge what I'm doing is feasible or not. So I'm going to move on to the next plan or the first one I had, and that was just the fishing line. I suppose if I had thinner wire of that white wire, it would work. The pieces I cut off were too short and 
the wire too thick. So it's not something that's not didn't work as such. I think I've got the wrong material in order to make it effective. I'll keep that in mind the next time I go shopping if I see a thinner version. All fun and games with prototypes, I'm telling you. Especially while watching root tips. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. I like it or don't I like it? Because the tighter I pull against the other side, I'm creating a little hollow. Which is great for airflow and not breaking any root tips. I like it. I'm going to give that a go. Another little observation that I wasn't anticipating, but I like it. And I much prefer the fishing line option. So note to self, out of curiosity, buy a thinner wire or just use fishing line. But it was interesting to see that one side was secure and then there was a give of the hollow, making it hollow. So we'll try that again. Orchids and crafts. Who'd have thought? I think I'm going to create a separate playlist for this. It's becoming a little bit like that. Once upon a time in the evenings, I used to put little patches on jeans and the, on the back side of the shorts. I used to just do a little tidy up sewing for my little ones. Now I have other little ones called kids with a C-H-I-D-S and I'm back to in the evening sewing. <laughs> uh, thank you Michael McCarthy and I mean that not being facetious. There we go. Theoretically, it's anchored on two points. Theoretically, that should be enough. But I haven't run this through a computer simulator. <laughs> When you, when you think prototypes, you think supercars or something like that, or mega projects. Well, for me, this is a me mega project because if this works, it'll be mega for whatever I do in future. But, you know, computer simulation and all that, nope. <laughs> Let me see. So this is solid, just on two points with fishing line. I like it. I really like it. I'm also glad that I can video this and if this works to what I'm hoping it will work to, then in a year's time, everything's just gonna look coolio. So my idea was then to thread roots behind the grating. To be in touch with the material underneath. I have 10 minutes before the Lamborghini comes home. I broke a root tip. Oh, I'm sorry. Eesh. You see? What did I say in the beginning? You think you're home safe and dry. Oh, Nina. Oh. Shaking my head. Shaking my head, seriously. The thing with these um, brassavolas, once a root tip is gone, very rarely do they branch. 
So I did cut a branching root tip off. I've got this one growing brand new from the base, which is great. Oh, hello, and I have this one growing brand new from the base as well. Okay, I think one piece, one piece, it'll be fine. After the damage I've done to two, three, what a shame. Considering how these roots can burrow themselves into anything and everything, they are so sensitive, so sensitive. I'm not going to fuss anymore, and I am going to put my hook on the top. Also because of space. When it comes to hanging her in the winter, if I hang, were to hang her like this, oh my goodness, I need more space anyway as it is. So <laughs> we'll stick with going vertical. Where is that old manky hanger? There. So as I was saying, any moment at this point, the Lamborghini could be coming home. I tried to, in the past, block, use the software to block out that noise. But if one day he comes home while I'm, and I don't want to block it out, I will put a, an, a, an alert. <laughs> I will put an alert into a timestamp. <laughs> Just say, you know turn down the volume of your devices because he makes a point or she makes a point of letting everybody know they're on their way home maybe to warn the partner who's waiting at home I don't know all very very loud when you consider noise pollution this day and age I'm surprised they still allow them and trust me I love my supercars I do I'm a petrol head Formula One and all that. Oh, love it. When they change the Formula One engines to the, you know, the ones that make less noise. <clears throat> yeah. And still, we've got supercars sounding like jet engines. But when they changed that, oh, I was so disappointed. But I did go to Spa one time on a Formula One. And I did get to experience the full sound of the grid the start and we were given earplugs and all this and all that and I was having none of it I put my phone on and I still have that very very old phone because I put my phone on and I just I didn't put my earplugs in and the sound never well twice in my life have I had goosebumps like that but incredible loved it absolutely loved it okay there's my hook and there's my orchid. Let me clean up and let's give it some water. Before I water it, I want to show, can you see, look down in there? Is that coming through? You can see the roots. I didn't break the root tips down in there. There is still activity for now. Maybe it doesn't like what I did to it now and they'll stop, but there is root activity and I didn't break those down there which for me was very important because that's part of the, all this is to see you see this root right here let's have a look there that one that is now touching the new material and that's the one I'm going to look out for and I have where was the new growing one right there I have this growing one right here, which is super, super. If all else fails, I have at least some, including this one, where no damage has been done. And yeah, I, done, I haven't damaged these tips, but uh, <laughs> let's get her hung up. Let's have a look where she's going to live and then water her. Alrighty, this is how she's going to be watered. Well, always has been watered. But now there's no sphagnum moss for decaying anything. And bit by bit, I will probably be hosing down, spraying out all the little nooks and crannies in there. And let's see what she does. I'm super excited. I love watering my orchids, so this is heaven for me. Little update on the other piece of flagellaris. The growths are doing really well. There is no decline on the growths yet. You can see it up there. 
the long one sticking up and bit by bit I'm getting her cleaned up as well along the rhizome simply because there's nothing to hold out the crud if it like if it is on sphagnum moss the sphagnum moss holds on to everything and this way bit by bit you can see the debris coming off that rhizome I like it let's hope for the best keeping fingers crossed thank you everybody so much for watching I really appreciate it the evolution continues have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time take care Bye.